Hello, my name is Peter Parfit, and in the next few minutes I'm going to be talking to you about this. This is the Wacom Intuos 5 graphics tablet. Now, the principle of the graphics tablet is simple. It takes over those functions that you would normally perform with a mouse. But the difference is that rather than using the mouse as a pointer, you're using a stylus or pen like this, with no wires attached, no batteries inside, and this interacts with the graphics tablet to produce those motions that you had been used to seeing before produced by the mouse. Now the only difference here is that this is much more accurate, uh, the resolution is better, and it's easier, more intuitive than using the mouse. Now many of you are more used to seeing me talking about woodworking subjects. I write for the UK magazine The Woodworker. And if you're going to get an article past the editor's desk, then you've got to make sure not only the words, but more importantly, uh, the photographs are up to a pretty good standard. And if you're then going to get one of your photographs on the front page of what is a national magazine, like this one of mine, uh, then you've got to put a significant amount of effort into that. Now, when I took this photograph, there were a couple of things in the background that I really didn't want to be there, but they weren't under my control. There were two cars, uh, there was a person walking by, uh, and so on. And so I needed to extract the subject of the picture, which is the gate in the foreground, and put it against a new background. And I did all that in Photoshop using a mouse, and it was hard work. Had I had the Wacom tablet, the whole process would have been much easier. Now let's look more closely at the tablet. When you buy one of these, you get the tablet itself, and this one is the medium version. There's a small and a large as well. You get the pen, you get a pen holder, and inside the pen holder are some spare tips. You also get a USB cable, but mine is not connected at the moment. Now there is an optional wireless kit, and that comes with three pieces. The first is a battery, which is used to power the tablet when it's no longer connected by cable to the computer. And that goes under this little cover here. And then there are two other pieces. One is the wireless transmitter, which stays connected to the tablet here. And then there is a dongle, which uh, is housed here underneath the tablet, but then plugs into uh, the USB port on your computer when you wish to use it. Now, I don't have that dongle, so I can't demonstrate this tablet uh, in wireless mode. Now, on the side of the tablet, there is a USB port here. And if you have the optional wireless kit installed, there is an on-off button for it just here. So I'm now going to connect the USB cable. And now the tablet is connected to the computer. Now on the surface of the tablet is the active area. It's delineated by these four corner markers. And it's in this area that the pen operates. And effectively that area is a representation of the whole of the screen that you would have in front of you on your monitor. On the left there are eight express keys. There are four at the top and four here. And these are user programmable and they can have whatever function that you would wish to assign to them. And then in the centre here is a touch ring, and we'll see that a little more in a minute. And associated with the touch ring there are four LEDs, one at each corner. You can probably just about make out that that one is illuminated at the moment. Now the way the pen interacts with the tablet is amazing. The tablet can detect pressure from the pen at 2048 different levels. It could detect the angle of the pen from minus 60 to plus 60 degrees. And it's working to a resolution of 5080 lines per inch. So all of that adds up to far greater capability than any mouse could ever provide. Now this is Photoshop and I've got the brush tool selected. And I'm now going to draw a couple of lines. Let's start with one where I press very gently, and now one next to it where I press a little harder. And you can see the difference quite clearly. And that means you can start to get expression in your strokes. So in places where you're pushing slightly harder, it's going to be thicker. If you don't like what you see there, you turn the pen around, and lo and behold, you have an eraser. 
and it's as simple as that. Meanwhile, the interaction between the pen and Photoshop, you get a display here of the angle that you're holding the pen at. And if you have a look now, I'm holding it at a shallow angle. If I raise it vertically, you can see the pen tip is changing on the paper and also the angle is being shown there. Now I've programmed one of these keys to be uh, a delete key and so there I've just deleted what I've done. Now I have running the uh, utility program that one can use to set up the various programmable functions of the pen and the tablet. And this is the pen one. There's a image of the pen there and it shows the two buttons and you can set these up to do a variety of things. The top button has this drop down menu associated with it and the bottom button a similar menu and you can set it however you like. Lots of different options. Uh, one of the other things is if you have a look here you can see this pressure gauge. As I press down you can see that the pressure that I'm exerting is being registered. Now I can now go to the setting up the functions of things like uh, the express keys. Now at this point let me point out that you can have different functions for those keys for different applications. And if you look here, uh, this uh, fourth uh, express key here, it says display toggle for multiple displays. Well that's fine. But if I go to Photoshop, it says it's a keystroke and it's Control alt z which means it goes back, a, a, it's one step backwards. So that's why I've programmed it to be for Photoshop. Um, and you can set these up however you like. There are drop down menus associated with each and you can even set up a, a series of keystrokes associated with them as I did for this functionality here with Photoshop. Now I'm just going to show you one simple example of this. I've got uh, Adobe Premiere Elements running in the background which is what I'm using to put this video together with and I want to now add Adobe Premiere Elements to my list of applications so I'm going to press the plus button here like so and I've got it running at the moment so there's Adobe Premiere Elements like so and I'm going to say OK now I want now the uh, left the bottom uh, pen uh, button uh, to represent a backward key stroke. So I've selected it and I'm going to say keystroke and I'm going to go to my keyboard and press the left hand arrow key and so that's OK. And I want the top uh, button on the pen uh, to represent a right hand keystroke like so. And so what that now means if I just lower this down. So here I am in Premier Elements and I've got my cursor here. Now if I press the bottom button on the pen, it's moving that cursor leftwards one click at a time. If I press the top one, it's moving it now right one click at a time. So that's a really, really useful way of setting this up. Application dependent and you can get it to do precisely uh, what you want it to do. Now let me give you just a very quick example of one way you can use this tool. I've got a photograph here and there's some bits on it which I want to remove using the spot healing tool. So I'm just going to use the pen on the tablet and you watch what happens. Right, here are the lines I'm trying to remove. They're pencil lines on the top of a piece of uh, white plastic work surface. So here's my, my tool, it's coming down, if I press gently, like so, I get a little thin blob. But if I press hard, that gets bigger. And that's perfect because that means now I don't have to keep altering the size of the tool, uh, I just use it uh, and press harder when I need to. And so there are my bits and pieces healed, and there's one down here in this corner. And that's it. So you can do this very easily. Isn't that nice? Now let's see if we can get rid of that run of glue. Doesn't look very clever. And there we go.
Now here's an example of something which I find myself having to do quite often. Uh, I've got a picture of a tool but the background is rather scruffy. I want to make that a little nicer. So I'm going to go to the quick selection tool and I'm going to get uh, this uh, selected. And it can be really, really quick uh, because my use of the pen now is pretty accurate. Obviously Photoshop is doing a lot of this for me uh, because it's a clever bit of software, it detects the edges quite nicely. However, uh, it still does help when you're using Photoshop to have a very accurate way of getting uh, the selections done that you want to, to do. And there we go, just about there. And I'll just do a little bit of refining the edge. Again, the pressure sensitivity is coming into effect here, and that's rather nice. And that's that done. I can now copy that layer, whatever it is I want to do, and now I have that, uh, that layer copied. Add a new layer, and let's uh, fill this with a nice soft. Off the car, and away we go. So there we are, that's, that's getting close to the sort of standard that uh, we need for a, a magazine picture. Now with the touch versions of the panels, uh, you can use the active area of the panel just like the, uh, the trackpad on a notebook computer. So you can move a cursor around, uh, but you can do more things. You can get it to do zooming in and out uh, just by using your fingers. And there are many other functions which I'm not going to describe now, but you can look those up on the internet. Now using the setup program you can set the individual function keys and the buttons on the pen uh, to be tailored to every individual application you run. And that might be uh, Photoshop, it might be Premiere Elements, it might be AutoCAD, whatever it is, uh, you can individually program uh, the function keys and the pen to react in a different way to each of those programs. So you can get your workflow set up just the way you want for every application. Now I've really enjoyed having a, a play with this Intuos 5 medium tablet. For me, I think that I will probably be able to manage with the small version and that has an active area about the same size as this white piece of paper. It's a smaller thing altogether and only has six express keys instead of the eight that we've seen on this machine. I would recommend anyone getting one of these to get the touch version because I've discovered that the functionality of being able to just use this like a trackpad on a notebook computer and with all the gesture sensitivity and so on, I find that extremely useful. I would really recommend you go to the Wacom website and have a look at the user manual for the Intuos 5 and I think then you'll discover a lot more about it, more things than I've been able to show you today. Thank you very much for watching, I've enjoyed doing this and with any luck for my birthday I'm going to get the small touch version of the Intuos 5. Thank you, bye bye.